an unintelligible <laughs> yeah. sort of project, right? right. And right. so it's not something that most people will feel comfortable sitting down and cracking open and reading. But I think that we all do our best to reach out to the community and the community leaders to get these ideas across to them and that um, you know they do a lot of really good work in terms of addressing some of the arguments that we bring up and promoting the objectives that we put forth okay. as well. Yeah, I, I guess I had admitted uh, before we got on film that I had read some and found it difficult not because of your writing but because of my lack of of, of uh, skill with the technical language that's used for philosophy. And so I, that's where the question came from, but it leads me to another question, which is, as I just got done reading um, Stephen Hawking's newest book, The Grand Design, where he says that philosophy is dead, and yet I see you utilizing it in an effort to bring more harmony universally to the human race, human rights, things such as that. So how would, what would your response be, to Dr. Hawking, on that? You know, Hawking is he's a man with a giant brain in his own sense, right? Um, and he thinks everything can be measured mm. quantitatively and resolved through investigation and um, experiment and these sorts of things. And I know that that attack is largely aimed at the philosophy of science. Mm. Right, so he's taking huge issue with the philosophy of science right now, and the philosophers of science aren't taking it lying down. I'll yeah. tell you that much. Um, there, I mean, philosophers of science are addressing things like what is the importance of validity and um, proving something to be false in terms of establishing truth. I mean, there are all these sorts of things that the scientific method doesn't address. Right, right. It's, philosophy is about understanding um, the way our cognitive capacities organize and arrange the world, right? And that's just something that science doesn't touch. Um, that is a much deeper debate. I didn't follow it very closely. Yeah. Um, but for your moral philosophers and your political philosophers and your liberation philosophers especially, he just can't touch this, right? It's There's just a certain amount of self-reflection that individuals and communities need to do in order to determine why it's worth giving their neighbors the value that they deserve just by virtue of their being their neighbors. Right. Um, science has no role in that. Yeah. Um, you can't convince somebody that it's important to demonstrate uh, dispositions of care um, for the purpose of justice, right, through science. It's, it's just something so, so let me cut in just yeah. a second here. So yeah. you don't you don't necessarily trust the idea that um, altruism is evolutionary. Even if it were, it wouldn't matter, hmm. right? Uh, the the famous ethical quote goes something along the lines of uh, "just because it is doesn't mean it should be," hmm. right? We may actually have a really nasty, repugnant human nature. That doesn't mean that we ought to act on that human right. nature. We have the mental capacity and the emotional capacity to outmaneuver our human nature, supposing it were brutish, right? Um, exhibited by a large number of people who have done so. Yeah. Um, so it wouldn't matter what our instincts were, um, uh, unless maybe it just made it harder for us to do so, but that mm. wouldn't give us any less reason to do so. I got you, okay. Yeah. Um, let me sort of, Maybe this is a feeble plug for philosophy, but it sounds to me like uh, philosophy could be the groundwork for activism. That there's a direct link here. So, is that can you encourage students that are thinking about what I want to do? And it seems like often philosophy is the last thing on the list because they're thinking it's all in their head. But can you make a better case than I am for it? Well, no. I mean, that's one of the reasons why students at Spelman major in philosophy. Mm -hmm. um, they realize at least they have expressed to me on numerous occasions that had they not taken that first philosophy course, they wouldn't realize that was, there was so much about the world that needed to be mm. addressed and that there was actually something they could do about it. Right. And, um, and that by taking philosophy, it allows them to articulate the reasons needed for this action much clearer and better um, so that they can reach out to community members to do so. 
Um, philosophy has always been the foundation for activism. Um, it, your public intellectuals are lots of times philosophers. Angela Davis, Cornel West, Noam Chomsky. Right. These are people who are doing you know, UN tribunals and putting together um, independent tribunals to judge uh, human rights violations. These are, are people who are um, able to to think long and hard about what these problems are and try to figure out why they're problems. Right. Right. And that is the basis for coming to action, right? You understand why and understanding why gives rise to the practical and the how. So um, philosophy is just the basis of everything. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So what what brought you to this particular topic? Was it a sense of, of activism within you, or would, had you just seen something in the social contract that needed correcting? I remember being an undergrad and reading the social contract tradition and thinking, this is right. Mm. This is it. Yeah. This is the ticket, right? This is everything. And I thought it was the greatest thing since sliced bread, and I knew that's what led me to become a philosopher and as I went into grad school then my mentors gave me these books okay. written by these women women I had never been exposed to in undergrad which is a problem right, right. Um, and hearing all these things terribly terribly wrong with the social contract and oftentimes rejections um, full throttle of the social contract tradition which broke my heart oh, okay. because I loved it so much yeah and I said, I'm going to save it. <laughs> I'm going to save it. Good. Um, there's a huge feminist concern with consent, and the whole reason why I wrote this book is to show that we can keep consent and that it is the basis for individual freedom because it is the basis for individual relationships with others. Mm -hmm. Right? And that if we can conceive of consent in this relational way and the recurrent renewal of it and the creativity allowed by it that all the 